first of all, just just really quickly on, on Jeff Sessions, he he was he is a known racist and should have never been uh, attorney general. He wasn't qualified to be attorney general. And now we find out that he lied twice under oath in front of Congress. And the first time we when he lied, we found out that he had at least three meetings with the Russian ambassador who the U.S. intelligence agency believe that he is a spy. The Russian ambassador is a spy and a spy recruiter. So here we have uh, Jeff Session, who is clearly now not a bit player, but a major key figure in all of this. And he has to go. He is now compromised as the chief law enforcement officer. And and the one more thing I just want to say here is like after he lied about uh, about to become attorney general, he's now running the most radical right wing department. Department of Justice, anti-immigration, anti-gay, anti-black, anti-brown. He's literally living his best bigoted life right now. And so with everybody now, George Papadopoulos, Gordon, Carter, I mean, this is just a band of misfits who were rushing to talk to Russia just so that they can please this president. All right. Well, yeah, I think we actually have some breaking news um, that we're going to go to just for a moment. So everybody just stay where you are. Um, I'm going to bring in Ken Delanian. Uh, just break this conversation for a moment and bring in Ken Delanian, our national security reporter from uh, from NBC News. Ken, what have you got? Good morning, Joy. Well, I have some exclusive new reporting from my colleagues, Carol Lee and Julia Ainsley. NBC News has learned that special counsel Robert Mueller has enough evidence to bring charges in his investigation of former national security advisor Michael Flynn and his son. And we're reporting that uh, the special counsel is looking into uh, Mike Flynn's activities on behalf of the government of Turkey and examining the question of whether he took action, official action, while he was national security advisor to facilitate, to facilitate the extradition of an, uh, of an opponent to the Turkish president, a cleric named Fatula Gulen, who lives in the United States, Joy. All right, Ken Delanian, thank you very much for that breaking news. So exclusive reporting here from NBC News that the special counsel has announced that he now has enough evidence to indict not just Michael Flynn, but Michael Flynn Jr., his son, who briefly worked at the White House. Uh, Congressman Ted Lieu, I want to get your reaction to that first. It does not surprise me. Keep in mind that yeah. Michael Flynn was always a shady character within the campaign. And there are very clear laws that you can't lobby for a foreign power without first registering. That's a very simple federal law that he did not comply with. There may be other charges as well. So it's not surprising. But this also tells me that Special Counsel Mueller is doing his job. He's looking at the evidence. And I think it's very hard now for Donald Trump to try to remove Special Counsel Mueller because mm -hmm. no one out there is defending Michael Flynn, Paul Manafort, Mr. Gates, or George Papadopoulos. And I think this is a good sign that we have democracy working in America. <laughs> be an unprecedented uh, move here, the indictment of the former National Security Advisor of the United States. Um, uh, what do you suspect is going through the minds of Republicans on Capitol Hill or in the White House right now? Well, I mean, it's not completely unexpected. Paul, uh, Michael Flynn was always just as vulnerable, if not more, than, say, Paul Manafort. These were the two biggest players that Mueller clearly had his, has his eyes on. Um, uh, Michael Flynn, his you know, foreign lobbying that he only recently just disclosed about his um, ties to the Turkish government, um, that always made him extremely an extremely high target on Mueller's list. And you know, it, back in March, um, Flynn's attorney actually um, went to the Congressional Intelligence Committees, um, put out a statement to the FBI essentially saying, uh, Flynn has a story to tell, and he's eager to tell it, um, but he's only going to tell it in exchange for immunity. So yeah. clearly that has not happened. Clearly the intelligence community, clearly Mueller has not given him immunity, and now he's going to be facing the consequences. And, uh, you know, Max, the January 27 infamous meeting between Jim Comey before he was fired and Donald Trump at that meeting in which Jeff Sessions was ushered out of the room, the subject of the meeting was Donald Trump asking him to go easy on Michael Flynn. Uh, how worried should the White House be that Michael Flynn now and his son could face indictment? I think that uh, Donald Trump has a lot of reason to be worried, and I think that means the rest of us have reason to be worried, because I think the odds are going up that President Trump is going to try to fire special counsel Mueller, because, yeah. I mean, Mueller and his team are like the new untouchables. They are building this case, yeah. and they're getting closer and closer to the Oval Office with every indictment, with every plea deal. 
Donald Trump knows that his record will not stand up to the kind of scrutiny that Bob Mueller was subjected to. And so he knows that it's going to be bad for him if he f tries to fire Mueller, but it could be worse for him if he doesn't fire Mueller right. and Mueller accumulates all the evidence to start going after not just Manafort and Flynn, but after Jared Kushner, after Donald Trump Jr. When it gets that into the family, that's when Trump is going to have to act, and that's why it's imperative right now. Republicans on Capitol Hill have to make it clear they will not allow Trump to fire Mueller, that if he actually succeeds in firing Mueller, that is an impeachable offense. Yeah. They need to get that message out there right now because they need to deter him from getting rid of Mueller in the way they deterred him this summer from getting rid of Attorney General Sessions. And Corinne Jean-Pierre, you've worked in a White House. I mean, part of it is also incumbent on, inside, on, on people who advise the president inside the West Wing. We haven't seen any evidence that Donald Trump is getting any contrary advice to what Steve Bannon and others want him to do, namely firing Jeff Sessions as a way to fire uh, Bob Mueller or defunding or getting Republicans to defund the Mueller investigation. I just want to put up, uh, while I let you respond to that, the order of succession, the chain of command at the DOJ. If Jeff Sessions, who was the attorney general, were to be fired, you'd then go to Rod Rosenstein. Um, this was the former job that Sally Yates held as the deputy attorney general. Rod Rosenstein has indicated he will not fire Bob Mueller unless it is for cause. After that, you get to Rachel Brand, who is the associate attorney general. Uh, then you have Dana Bente, who resigned or announced that he would resign on October 20th. He is actually still the U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of Virginia, the former acting Attorney General, but has indicated he will resign. So indicates he probably wouldn't fire uh, Bob Mueller either. Uh, what do you suspect the advice is going around the West Wing, or what? What would it normally be? Let's actually go on Earth One for a minute. If this were a normal <laughs> White House, what would the West Wing advisors be telling the President of the United States right now? Well, if it was a normal White House, we certainly would not have fired uh, FBI Director James Comey in the first place to have triggered uh, the uh, the special counsel, Rob Mueller, to be put into place in this independent investigation on Russia. So, I mean, it goes so far from how abnormal all of this has been. But, Joy, the thing about this is that Donald Trump has made it very clear to the American people that he thinks this Russia investigation is a hoax. And I think we need to believe him. The American public needs to believe him. And I think it's incumbent on Congress to protect Mueller, to protect the Mueller's budget, and make sure that the firing of Mueller doesn't happen. And there's another thing, too, that we haven't talked about that Donald Trump, as it's been reported, has been thinking about, is pardoning. He's, he is seriously, as we all know from now, is thinking about pardoning maybe Michael Flynn, maybe Jared Kushner, if, he, if it gets to that point. And so we, we, are, we are potentially going to be headed into a constitutional crisis because this president is feeling the walls are closing in, and this is what we've seen from him already with obstruction of justice. Now, we, we, we yeah, we're going to keep this panel just for one second. I want everybody to hold on just for a second. I want to go back to Ken Delaney for just one moment. Uh, Ken, you have some additional context to 